The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman, Tigers of Nations Hour, and it's my pleasure on the 23rd day of October. Really wrapping up October, huh? Now, let me just say this before I forget, because I, I was going to mention it uh, yesterday. I've mentioned it before. When I look back at different years, the years where the Dow has survived the September, October, the usual debacle that we have, we haven't had it this year. Um, and I won't call it a debacle, we did have a, a, a sharp pullback from the high uh, of uh, September to uh, for about four, four or five weeks, but it wasn't all that much. But when there has been a new recovery high in October, I'm usually impressed with that. And I found that invariably the market, or at least the Dow, closes pretty close to that high at year's end. So it's just, I mean, you know, statistics are there to be uh, unproven as well as proven. So that's just my, my recollection, and I, and I did a little historical look back, and that's it's kind of been the case for a majority of the times. So we are now at 26,819, up 32 points in the Dow. You can see it's just been stuck. Stuck actually is not bad when you consider that you've got a Boeing that got smashed to the downside, that you've got um, a McDonald's that got hit to the downside, that you've got... Um, MasterCard, MA, plunging. So the fact that we're holding quite well here is impressive, but I, I have to look at this as if to say, like the previous peak Ds, let me show you this in detail. Oh, let me just show it to you here. Uh, let me just click on the dollar, INDU, and now we'll look at it. Have a look at this. Back in April, we had a sell signal. I actually went short the day before the all-time high. And you had a bad news cloud cover. And that lasted for about 10 sessions before the moving averages crossed negative and the market plunged. Um, yes, there was a buy signal right on the day of the low, back June the 3rd, I believe it was. And then it took a while before, it took five days before, and huge price movement before the uh, moving averages crossed positive. Then, of course, right here, and that's what's in July, right on that day, July the 16th, got a sell signal, actually went, went short, uh, about seven points off the top. Bad news, cloud cover. It took 13 days, though, before you got a negative crossover. And then there was a plunge to the bottom. I said there's going to be an H pattern, and that's going to make it really difficult to get a buy signal because of the volatility that this produces sideways. That H could go to an M, and it did that, and then suddenly you got that gap up, huge gap up. It was almost too late to go long because we had to wait. And then you got that bad news cloud cover at a peak D yet again. That peak D was right there on the 12th of September. It took a while, we, about 100 and so points before we went short. Then you plunge to this low, and you hit this trend line exactly. Did not get any buy signal. It was a little late, but we did get a peak A, peak B. And now we've got to put a B and N, N, C because it was getting a little too crowded there. But now I'll put bad news cloud cover. But here's the difference. Clud, it could be a clud, but it's really a cloud. That the moving averages, look, each time, look how big the distance was. Look how wide before you got a crossover, 13, day, 13 days in the Dow from that uh, high of July. The high of September, it took 14 sessions before it plunged lower. 
Now, and look, look at the green nine period exponential moving average, but wait a minute, look at this one, very narrow. Does that mean that it has to cross negative? No, I've seen this green stay green, even though it's crossed uh, just a tad, uh, not crossed, but held just above the 14 period moving average, the black line. So this is where there is the greatest risk that there could be a pullback. Doesn't have to happen, but this is where you've got to be careful. So we've already gone one, two, three, four, five. This is the sixth session. Since when? Since now I can go back to the chart that we were looking at. Since we were looking at peak C1 at 27,120. Why did I call it a peak C1? It was a peak C. But the next move higher, two days later, it should have gone to a D. But IBM spoiled the whole party, said seven points below 27,120. We couldn't do it. But everything about it said there's a good chance that I could call it a peak C1, C2, which has the impact of a peak D. But then you need other aspects to confirm that it's actually a sell signal, because after peak C1, C2, we've seen how often you actually get a sudden spiral, one quick move to the upside to get the D, and then it comes back down again, except you've used up so much downside energy that it doesn't drop all that much. So this is really a very important moment for three reasons, just on the chart. One is, on the daily chart, the MACD is still good. Number two. The stochastic has hinted that there's weakness. It's at 77% below 80%, but that's not bad. It just means it's, it's a little negative. And number three is that the price is held above the black line, the 14-period exponential moving average, which right now is at 26,771. That's not good enough for me. I would have to see a decisive move below 26,720, probably even 26,700, to say, ah, now we're going to start to see that the MACD cross negative, etc. So this is still a work in progress, just as it had been over there. But it says to me that there's a chance that in this rotational market right now, we're in the in um, in one index, you can get a McDonald's screaming to the downside. Look at that. Even today, down 45 cents at 198. The, the high was. I, did I forget to type this in? I'll do it right now. At 221.93 on the 9th of August. 221.9389. I'll even put in the year because I think this could be for a little while. And there you are. Leg D goes to an E at 221.93 on the week of the 9th of August. And now we're trading at 198. That's a, that's a huge move, what, 13%? You've also got a peak D, pretend, pretend, no, you've already got a peak D in the, in the monthly chart of McDonald's. Wait a minute, that's in the defensive area. A defensive area meaning stocks like, you know, groceries, just uh, household products, Procter & Gamble. Wait, Procter & Gamble is just uh, at 122.83, it is, less than two points of its all-time high. It's in the same sector, and that's really what I'm saying. We've got a rotational market for my subscribers to my opening call. We're trying very hard to be under the radar in areas that are, I wouldn't say, I don't know how you can say, they are market neutral, but they are not involved so much in the day-to-day -day machination of the actual stock market. And so far, I think they're holding okay. Yeah. I'll be right back. Bowser Chapman, Bowser 34 SP. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. 
Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi folks, so the reason why I wanted to go through that Chapman Wave alternate count of peak C1, C2, where C2 just misses going to a leg D, but everything about the technical suggests that it should have been a D. And therefore, you can think of it as going down a little deeper. Here's your two-minute chart. Look at this E-mini. Went to a peak C1 right there at uh, 3,002.50. And then what does it do? It makes a, a cup formation. It goes right back to 3,002.50 at 11.48 this morning. And now it's pulled back very sharply. You see the technicals were all deteriorating. We don't have quite this deterioration yet in the, in the daily Dow. But uh, there's a potential for that. And you've got peak C1, C2 in the 10 minute. But this 10 minute chart uh, has held so far, kind of gone under, but holding the 14 period moving average. It could still get to a D. We'll see what happens. But in the meantime, that's the way we do it because it's, it's a heads up. It gives you great warnings uh, and head, just a yellow light that flashes. And that's how you can use it. Now, what's really important about this is that, yes, Procter and Gamble just bounced uh, very sharply. But look what we've got. We've got, I think I have the notations here. You've got UTX, United Technology. Down today, dollar sixty one had good earnings yesterday. It isn't at leg E. It's broken above the downtrend in the weekly chart in this cup formation. Remember, I like to look at cup formations. Uh, let me just do this real quickly. And uh, the chapter wave methodology, what do we do? We're looking at the patterns of straight down, straight up, or a cup, an arch formation, or arc formation, or a cup formation. You can get a combination. It's the same thing, uh, one of the three things straight line down and, and an arc. If it breaks the left side low, it can go deeper. That's why it's red. And the green side, if it breaks the upside, it can be very positive. I'm always looking for at least a peak D. The fourth highest peak, it can go higher. But D is where other things can happen. And right here in the background, you can see peak D, 139.40 back in, um, that was September for is that September. Yeah, September the 13th for uh, United Technologies, UTX. Pulls back down to the 128 area and then it goes all the way to 142 yesterday, trading 139.77 in the daily. Leg D underneath the 144.40 high that was actually a peak B minus way back uh, in May, week of the 3rd of May. Uh, 
So this is usually a heads up because if you can get to a leg D and then a peak D, but it's under a previous high of importance, he says, wow, you didn't even have enough strength this time to get to a D above the previous highs. So I'm watching this really closely. Meantime, back at the ranch, you've got very good action if you're looking at the monthly chart because it was 144.15 high in September of 2018. Uh, drops down to 144%, rallies back to 104.40, 35 cents higher in May of 2019, and then has been consolidating. But this candle so far for October is a pretty decent candle thus far. So, um, and then you get Caterpillar, same category, heavy, heavy duty industrials. Uh, Caterpillar right now is down 24 cents, come back nicely, had really horrible earnings, but it's trying its best to hold it. That's the reason why I think that we've got to look at this as a rotational market, that there are some sectors like the tech sector that is really faltering badly in some areas. I mean, especially, say, Salesforce.com, CRM, that area. And yet, at the same time, you've got the industrials, which are attempting desperately to try to find some kind of support. This is going to be very important because you can see Caterpillar needs to get back into the 140, 140 141 area to break both the downtrend of the weekly chart and the Chapman Wave Inside Track resistant repellent zone of the monthly chart. And the MACD and stochastic in the monthly have not acted all that well. Stochastic in the um, weekly is 55%. Okay, not great. And the weekly um, MACD is actually quite good. So this is going to be a very important phase right at where we are right now. Over the next, I'd say, next week, going into the end of October, what happens and how does it happen? We'll see what happens. Question I had was, oh, let me just finish this up. S&P, SPX, X, S&P. Holding quite nicely. Yes, there's a chance for a Chapman Wave. Um, look right here. Big D, one bar pullback, two bar pullback, third bar goes to a new recovery high. Is that an alternative? Is that a Chapman Wave instant restart, E slash A? At this point, I, I'm just saying, let it prove itself. I'm not giving it the benefit of the doubt just yet, but I have circled to say it's a possibility. MACD is okay. Um, it's actually quite good. And the stochastic is very good at 91%. Does it have the strength? We'll see soon enough. Uh, look at the QQQ. ND, uh, this is the NDX 100. Made a double top at peak D. 103. Let me just double check the price there. I think I um, got it wrong. 194.50. Let me put that in. 194.50. 4.50. Um, and that was uh, the 15th. Yeah, and that was right there on the 17th. And then you pull back for two days. Third day tries to run and break it, and it fails just under 194.50. And you've got a faltering action here in the QQQ. Um, if you look at the weekly chart, it's just at resistance. No big deal. Still, It's still acting quite well. If you look at the monthly, it actually looks very good. So here we are in the three time frames that you've seen in so many different indices and stocks. The daily could be saying one thing, the weekly could be saying something else, and so forth. Many of the monthly charts are still holding pretty well. So I don't want to get too far in front of this, but I am saying that uh, for subscribers, we've taken some positions, um, lower price stocks, because I don't want to put too much money to work now. We've raised quite a nice bunch of cash. At the same time, we do have stocks. I, th I would I would venture to say right at this moment, let me see, can I say it? Can I say yes, I can. Every one of our, every one of our stocks is in positive uh, territory, uh, even our one short that we have. Huh. How about that? Okay, so now let's go to uh, IWM. This is right now as we're talking at 12, uh, 24 p.m. Eastern time. 154.40, up 19 cents on IWM. It's holding pretty well. Will we see that the Russell 2000 actually has good strength while the other indices have too many components that are, are shutting down that are just not acting well? We'll see soon enough. So in the meantime, if there's a push in the next, by the effort, last day of October, Halloween, uh, if there's a push in the um, Russell 2000 IWM above 
I would say that's quite good action. If there's a pullback below 152, I'd say, hey, that's not good action. All right, let's go to gold. Gold is uh, rallied very nicely earlier on. It's up eight dollars now at 14.96. Stuck. It just can't break and hold above this 14 period moving average, but it is holding nicely. The MACD is attempting to turn up. Stochastic's flat at 33 percent. That's usually not good. But let's see what happens here because I give you the parameters. If let me let me drag this across a little further so gold had a, had a trading band that it kept going into and then pulling either above or below but the trading band is really between 14.94 and i'm going to say on a short-term basis there's a trend line resistance at 15.06 and uh, but way up at 1520. But it's been stuck in this band for a long time, consolidating after a spectacular move going from under 1300 to 1566. Uh, that, that's a big move, and now it's digesting those gains. If you look at silver, silver right now is trading at 0.08 up 70 at 1758, stuck in that same little narrow band. If you look at platinum earlier on, it was acting quite whoa, whoa, whoa. Platinum is up 26 at 922.60. That is good. You know, I saw it moving earlier and I thought, what can we buy as a stock or ETN or something for platinum? I, I, I still don't know. I should check it out. This is a really good move. Uh, it's a bounce, but a strong bounce. Platinum's acting very well at 26.40. I'll be back. Basil Chapman, Dow's up 14. 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhance the degree of accuracy in calling price turns as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter the opening call today by visiting tfnn.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, Ron. I'm just quickly notating Chapman Wave notation for PPLT. Now, let me just see what we've got here for volume. Maybe there's no volume whatsoever. It's not worth even trading. Uh, today's volume is 
Ah, 73,000. Yesterday's volume, 41, 40. Oh, okay, it has volume. It's not big, but it's volume. Okay, so we've got PPLT. This is the Platinum ETN. I'm calling it an ETN. I'm not sure what it's called. ETFS, physical platinum shares, PPLT average volume is 88,000. Net assets is 721 million. Dividend yield, not. Year to date return plus 15. Percent expense ratio 0 0.60, price 82.50. We're looking at 86.47. So when this was uh, um, promulgated, so Granite shares Platinum Trust is PLTM. Well, no, this has shares. I'm not going to go elsewhere. So this is a very good move. And it says, look, if you look at the weekly chart, you'll see in the channel wave notation, there was one penny difference that I made in a peak, uh, a red peak B, to say that it was a phantom peak. But it went peak from a low bar of uh, the 17th of August, 2018, and 71.92, it would peak A, B, C, D. Pulls back sharply, starts again. Peak A, B, C, D. Pulls back. Again, A, B, C, and it goes to a D. Pulls back. Now, is this going to be a high-level consolidation, or is it going to turn around and make the H formation and just plunge below 82? I don't know. So far, it's actually acting very well. So, yeah, so I'm just saying that platinum is acting very... This is a huge move. Not sure why. Hey, uh, platinum is used in um, automobile uh, exhausts. Yeah, don't see anything in GM. Don't see anything in Ford. I don't know what it is. Anyway, it's moved very nicely. Okay. So um, let me just get out of that. Let me PPLT. Let me just write a note about this. PPLT. All right. So we've got to keep that in mind. Just real quickly, I wanted to show you the dollar did rally a little bit. Uh, bounced. It's not rally. It bounced from 97.14 to today's high of 97.65. Um, yep. A little bit of a leg A, gray leg A. That month, the weekly chart still says sell mode to join the daily sell mode. The weekly chart has a monthly chart hasn't even given a sell signal, let alone anything else. But so far, MACD is holding well. Stochastic is 89%. I like the action of the dollar. Looking out, but shorter term, I think you've got time and some price, a little bit more price left. I think this whole area of support in the 96.75 to 96.50 area is going to be tested um, over the coming few weeks if it breaks under, closes under. 96.90. Now, the other thing is if it rallies towards 97 to 98, um, that's going to be a good sign. That will be a good sign. All right. Um, had a question about HQY. HQY. Now, I don't know this one at all. HQY is uh, Health Equity Inc. Maybe it's a REIT. I'm not sure. Did it made a low, significant low. Let's see. Was that a low, low? That was the low. The low after its IPO back in 2014 was under 20. And then it goes in the monthly chart, it goes, that's been covered. I can't see it. So let's just do this. 23.79, 23, 23.79, 22.26. I need you to see that. It looked like a peak. It is a peak. We're counted as a peak. And it's a peak A. So you're always looking for D, at least the D. So this goes A, B, C. Is that... That looks like it's a penny or two higher. So let's see. C, 54.95 in June of 2007. 55. Yep, we were right. Uh, so we got D, and then an E, an F, and even a G. Very unusual. It can go to a G. Remember, after G, you have to recall a recycle. This was a potential chapman wave instant restart, but that failed. Why? Because the MACD gave the signal to say that was a PG. It was the first time you could even put a down arrow. And what did it do? It went from just over 100 to uh, 50, gets cut in half, bounces to 83. Uh, yep, 83. Uh, pulls back, bounces again to about the 82 level, pulls back sharper. And uh, now we're looking at 56.87. So it's saying the monthly chart is just too jagged and it's, it's failed to hold gains. <clears throat> so it's going to be retesting the arch formation, the lowercase h pattern, and that makes the low of 50.29 in January of 2019 imperative to hold. It's at 56.91 right now. It's it's on the 200 period exponential moving average of the weekly chart. Let me have a good look at this. Uh, goes to peak A, then it goes to a B, failure. It goes to, again, fails, makes the cup formation, and then fails. This is that H, the reverse H pattern. 
It looks like an upside down dreaded H, and it makes a very large, look at this, a very large H pattern. And now it's trying to find support. So let's read the question. The question is, um, 56.84 HQ is at right now. And the question is, good morning, Basil. Would you look at HQY? For me, I am a starter. I have a starter position at 53.55. Oh, good, right down there, 53.55. Good, almost off the lows. Um, and bought coming off the double bottom and crossing the 9 EMA. It's at peak B now. Would you add as it goes into leg C or wait until it had crossed the 50 uh, EMA? How would you play this? My current stop is at my entry, 53.55. So, Greg, I'm pleased I could read that because it gives me a whole sense of, of the psych psychology behind what you're doing as well as the technicals. Psychology is that you're looking at this as, a, as the chance, and I'm going to put this in right here. I'm putting in, I, yeah, I'm, no, I can't put an up arrow just yet. I just, I need the stochastic to be at 80%. So I'm going to go. Peak A, peak B, correct. That's exactly, we're, we're on the same page there. Now what we're looking at is the weekly chart, because you're not going to get the daily to do much more unless that weekly chart is improving. And the stochastic is flat at 12%. The MACD is improving, but the price hasn't got, it just hasn't gone to the strength. So, Greg, this is what I'm going to say to you. I understand your thinking, because your thinking is, if you can get in this nice and early, you could have another one of those big bounces, which is a big percentage move, even though it gives it back in the end. But that, who, I'm not would you complain if it goes from 56 right now, even to the ugly candle of um, August that went uh, into the 73 area? I wouldn't complain. So I'm going to say to you, your, where would the next entry be? I'm going to suggest that you hold off. You've got your position at 53. That means you've already got a three-point gain. You've got about a six and a half, seven percent gain. I don't want to mess that gain up just because I'm anxious. But I do want to, I understand, I do want to see that if the histogram is improving in the weekly, it could take a little time. And this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to draw in the rectangle that I normally do, normally would do here to say, this is probably your containment area. That's number one. But let's do the full Chapman wave notations. I'm going to give you the cup formation. I'm going to give you the right side. Now, you know that the right side stalled over here, look, stalled over there. So I'm expanding a little bit more. And I'm going to say, OK, be as conservative as you can. Let's go to the highs there. We're going to go from there to not, you can't go to the low, the lows doesn't work anymore. So we have to go to that candle right there. I'm now going to, I'm going to do a, a new parallel and I'll tell you exactly what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a test of 58.26 by the 28th of October. And I'll explain what I'm looking at and why I'm looking at it. I'll be right back, Basil Chapman Guy with 29. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. 
Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Hi, folks. So the HQY has 58.04 and 57.41 as upside resistance levels in the daily, 57.01 in the 120-minute chart. Uh, yes, I, I'm not going to say to add just yet. In fact, let's look at it again in a few days' time. Maybe Friday we'll look at it again. I, I'm just saying... You got your position, you've got a nice gain. I'd rather have a good gain on one position than to even it out by being a little early. I don't have a sign yet. Look, the technicals and everything are good. This should have a nice green candle, and it's only up 0.02. The day is young, it could still change, but that's just saying it hasn't got. I like, you know, my rule 136. I like it when you've got, look at this on the left side, when HQY made its low of. 50.87 on the 4th of September, it went whoosh up to a peak A, and that was on the 5th of uh, September, 59.04, two points high. Then it pulls back for one, two, boom, third session, it's up, and it, it makes a peak B, and it has one consolidation day, and then boom, it's up again. Then it has a peak C uh, in the 62s, it has one consolidation day. Bam, it goes to D, and then it plunges. And it plunges, but it holds the left side low, starts again, goes peak A, and now it's taking its time. Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bars before it goes to new high. Then it goes to the uh, you know, recovery high. And then it takes one, two, this is the third session, one, three, six. I, it's just taking too long. Something's not quite right. I think you're going, going to be correct if you're looking at the weekly chart, and you can suddenly see a move to 58.23 by... 58.23 by today's Wednesday, well, by Friday or Monday at the latest, uh, but it mustn't take out 55.60 uh, support. So, I, I, you know, it's just a little early. Let's keep posted. We'll do this together. Just let me know how you're doing so far. Your entry was excellent, and it's done what you wanted. To, to, to add the extra position, I want velocity to the upside. I want to, I want to build the position with higher highs at this particular point, okay? Next thing we're looking at here is, um, let me just go back to see where the E-mini is. Did it, yep, there it is. So the E-mini is trying to rally. It's now at 2999.50. It's still under that peak C1, C2, and the 10-minute chart is also taking its time. So Twitter reports EPS tomorrow morning. All right, let's see, let's go to Twitter. Uh, Twitter, T-W-T-R. 
Now, folks, I think that you can consider that some of the some of the lower price stocks, if they're acting well, this is the time to be in those stocks because if they're under the radar and they've held very nicely, they've actually gone up in this environment. For much less money, you can get much better percentage gains by going into those. We have quite a few now uh, low price stocks. Um, I don't like to talk about them because I, I'm, not, I'm not super su 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 superstitious, but it does make me a little nervous. Um, uh, I, I, I was asked, OK, what are we doing? Um, yeah, we've got one that's up four and a half percent today, a low price stock. Uh, we got it in 352, I believe, and now it's 371. Um, we got in just a couple of days ago and we've got another one that's doing very nicely. Um, also up a nice, good, a good percentage. Uh, just, I, no, uh, I let me get out of this. Twitter is sitting on the nine, on the two hundred orange two hundred period exponential moving average, uh, and and it has, you know, even if it has a good report, the way I'm looking at the chart says that Twitter Inc. social media thirty eight down eighty one right now. Um, at the low of its most recent move towards the 46 level, now 37. I just, even if it has a bounce, it's going to take a week or two to really climb and get into the 41, 30 or higher area, close once, and then the next week it could go to 43, and then even close just over 41. I'd be very impressed making a cup formation. I don't have that right now. So even if Twitter comes out with good news, it's going to have to follow up with good price action. So risk reward, buying it here at 38 point. You know what I would do if you're interested in buying uh, um, Twitter? Why don't you just buy it out of the money? No, I'll tell you an even better way. Buy the 30, if there is a 37.50 call and make it uh, for next month, buy the 37 call and you don't have to risk very much. You know exactly what you can lose everything. And if it's a month, you probably won't, unless it really tanks three points, you'll still have at least a little bit that you can get. And if you can buy 37.50 for next month, you can buy it under 75 cents. $75 is your risk. And if it works, you really make good money. And if it doesn't work, you say, you know what, if I bought Twitter at 38.01 and it drops a point, um, hey, it's kind of what you're looking at. So I, all I can say is that I would not be risking anything now. It's made it, I, I'm calling this a peak F top. I mean, in fact, actually going to change it now. It's a peak F top in the weekly chart. The MACD is bad. Stochastic is way down 39%. It's way under the 14-period uh, weekly moving average. I don't see anything just yet. 40.21 is the resistance. Now, two things that I wanted to say about uh, Twitter. One is that with all the advertising that it's had over the last two years, and I don't have to tell you who it was that gave it the most advertising, why did it fail at the 200-period moving average of 47.79? So over three years, it's gone from... But let's just go to the low of 2016. That was uh, e even before uh, 2016. Yeah, so the low was... 13.73, it had a spectacular move going to 47.79. It was an IPO in 2013, but in January of 2013, it IPO'd at about uh, just under 40. It went to 74.73, and that was it. And then it went down to 13. That's a huge decline. What is 87 percent? It's a big, big decline. And then it rose to 47.79. That's a huge move up, almost a full gainer. A 367 percent gainer. So now it's in a cup formation. It might be making a cup and a handle, a, a cup and a handle within a cup and a handle. So this will be smaller, but it cannot break underneath the monthly 200 period moving average of 36. A close below 36 is really bad. If it holds there, let's look at it again. I'm just saying, I I don't need to get in front of this train, if especially if it's going downtown. Um, I don't mind if it has a good move. Yeah, then it, actually, if it has a good move and Twitter becomes fashionable, uh, it could challenge the 46 level of the 200 period moving average in the monthly chart and power right through it. Uh, so yeah, I don't mind missing a little bit here in gains rather than uh, sacrifice something because I'm early just because I think it might work out. So let's just see how it handles everything. So TMO, a question I had. One of my favorites that we don't own, 
famous for years, years, decades, actually. Thermo Fisher, it was Thermo Fisher, no, it was Thermo, then it was Thermo Fisher, then it was Thermo Fisher Scientific. No, it was Thermo, Thermodynamics. Then it became Thermo Fisher Scientific. Medical equipment, just a spectacular company. Uh, I mean, just they, they've always, even when they changed CEOs, as the, the guy who owned it who had a Greek name, I can't remember who it was, started it. He did fantastic, he did everything he did was right. Look at this, look at the way from 2012 even, it's going from the 50 area and it just walks the 14 period moving average and it uses the green 9 period moving average as a springboard, had good earnings today and it's up 16 at 297 and it made a peak C and a pull back and now it's trying to re regain the 205 level. I'll be back, Bells are trapped and take it. This is our guys are pretty as if he's up food. Be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. This is Steve Rhodes. Stay tuned for another great hour of the Trader's Edge heard here at TFNN.com. Hi, everyone. We've got Steve coming up, then Dave White, then Tom O'Brien. Don't, don't forget, check out my opening call, my daily newsletter, very comprehensive newsletter. And we've been negotiating this uh, market right now, doing absolutely whatever we can to just keep on the right side of it. We'll see if that stays. Um, meantime, back at the ranch, you've got SMHs in, impacted this afternoon. Lamb Research trading at 233 down $1.43, comes out with uh, earnings. Uh, it's almost at the all-time high, 233 right now, and 244.98 was the high. In September, it made the cup formation. Now it's making a, a handle formation, a big handle formation. What what can happen if this is peak C, a leg C in the in the monthly chart? If it has a fabulous earnings, and I'm hearing that 
some of the semiconductor companies are starting to see uh, the billings improve. So we'll see what happens there because LAM research comes out as Xilinx, which is as a, was one of the leaders, and then it just took a beating from 141 all the way down to last week. It hit 90 or two weeks ago. Now it's trading at 94. So that's, that says that it's a real mixed result there as well. And then Intel tomorrow comes out with earnings, and Intel's holding very nicely, but in the lower range of its mid-range, no, in the middle of its um, range from the 59s all-time high down to the 42s. Um, so it's stuck there at 51. Hey, it's going to be really important how this plays out coming into, um, coming into the... Uh, End of the week with the semis. And look, the semis now down at $1.47. Earlier on, it was down at $120.62. So it's coming back a little bit from the lows. And the weekly chart still looks pretty darn good, as does the monthly. So I'm not giving back up yet. I'm saying this is a process, a, a process of rolling over. And whether or not we gain to roll over, it really depends on things like the XLK, the, the, the tech sector, the semiconductors, et cetera. So stand by because you're about to go to programming for the rest of the day. But in the meantime, check out my opening call, my daily newsletter. And of course, I'd love to see you tomorrow. Let's see what happens after the earnings reports today because if there is a mix, it goes back to what we've seen like Caterpillar and, and United Technologies. But if they, if two of them, out of three in the next two days are really strong that can really help the semiconductors if they're weak i think we're in for a bit of a dip and that dip's going to affect the cues the the um the tech sector and probably the s p i'll be back tomorrow have a great day stay tuned for Steve.